what do you do in your spare time for self-care? Um, so I actually work out every morning at 6.10 um, at a gym called F45, and I love it, and I love the people and the friends that I've created there, so that's a huge part of it. Um, I also am very conscientious of who I surround myself with, mm -hmm. so that's a big part of my self-care. Um, and just knowing that I can go home and I don't take my clients with me, right? Mm -hmm. I don't w have that heaviness on me when I go home. Mm -hmm. I clock out and I clock out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think um, Paige said her answer great. And just to piggyback again on the, <laughs> her, her great answers. Um, yeah, just being able to figure out who you could surround yourself around. I think this is an interesting age for us to be in. Um, the quarter-life crisis, you may call it, where like people <laughs> might be either starting families or people might not be there just yet. Or people are still mm -hmm. trying to figure out your their, their, their kind of balance in this world. Where do, where do they fit in? Yeah. And we also talk amongst each other, so like, where do we fit in in this, in this life? And mm -hmm. not, try not, not the need to compare or anything like that. I think that's the biggest part of it. But as far for, as far as my answer of self care, like walking my dog, I think is a big self care of mine. Um, being around people that value what I do, being around people that's um, conscious of what I do, sensitive of what I do, uh, I think it's hard to find peers that kind of resonate with what you do, and it's hard to have a good conversation here and there. We talk about this all the time, so it's interesting that we're talking about this now. Yeah. But um, but yeah, um, listening to music, going to the movies. I I love going to the movies. Um. And spending time with your loved ones, this this job and this role could be very heavy on the heart. And even though we, we, we you try to leave the clients at the door, sometimes it, some distractions are needed, some healthy distractions, which comes with the walking, which comes with the music, which comes with the video games. I'm a big video game guy and all that. So I think that's what I do for self-care. Yeah. yeah. Pets are definitely helpful with self-care. I have yeah. a cat myself and, you know, we love our pets and a gym as well. Yeah. It's a great place to, you know, burn burn out some stress. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. We also hold each other accountable. I'll be like, Josh, like, go take care of yourself. Go, like, play some video games tonight, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. Enjoy yourself. We had a tough day. So we hold each other accountable. Or for if he told me the other day, when you're on PTO, don't you dare do any work. Like, you need to take your time off. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes it's easier to do self-care with a partner, right. with a, a good dynamic, or even with, with great, great employers. Thankfully, mm -hmm. we work for a place, Child First Bridgeport, that values self-care, that if we do need to take a half day, um, you know, even though it might suck to, like, leave a client behind, it's absolutely necessary because we can't do the work if we're burnt out. And also acknowledging and catching up with cues with, our partner, like if she noticed I'm having a bad day or I'm noticing that she's having a bad day, encourage mm -hmm. like, hey, like if you are not up for it today, it's okay. Like we could reschedule with a client or we could see them at another time. Like it's no biggie. Right. And um, obviously it's never perfect, but it's nice to encourage that. It's nice to have the flexibility and room to encourage that within our peers and within our work practice. So Definitely. Yeah. And we're always reminded too that our clients are able to survive without us. Like we're there. For an hour a week and they're we're helping them to be able to do that mm -hmm. but they'll be okay without us as yeah. well yeah. Mm -hmm. so you are a video game guy yeah jedi fallen order have you played it yes yes i'm actively <laughs> playing jedi fallen order right now um i think yeah i'm actively going through it but sometimes especially with like i mentioned the the quarter life crisis moment, trying to figure out my placement and all these adult responsibilities. It's hard to like get some few hours, but I was playing yesterday. I played for a few hours yesterday. <laughs> I'm making it a priority to get some 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 work like that done. So it's great. I, I'm enjoying the game. Have That's you been good. playing? I haven't played it yet. Yeah, do you have to? <laughs> I'm following like the story online, but I haven't played it. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what really got me was TikToks. Like every time <laughs> I go on TikTok, it's like a cool clip, and I'm like, all right, like today's the day I'm gonna go see that moment, live through that moment. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all about balance. Yeah. Yeah. What is your favorite inspirational quote? So this is a tough one, but the first thing that came to mind um, was a quote that my dad um, said. He was like, the best thing you can do every day is show up. So that's what I do. You just, you show up, you get out of bed, get dressed, and just show up. And sometimes 
but that's all I need, and that's enough, you know, seeing, mm -hmm. just smiling maybe at someone um, could change their day, so I just continue to show up for myself and others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I think, um, I think I, for, for myself it's hard to kind of pick a favorite of anything, I guess, like, <laughs> <laughs> not to give an answer like that, but I guess I have a fav my favorite, whatever in the moment is what resonates with me the most. Mm -hmm. So like when it comes to the music, movies, like I don't have a favorite, but whatever resonates with me at the moment, I can always think about a quote of a specific time frame or music or like mm -hmm. movies of a specific time frame. So I guess my favorite quote is, um, it's from Andor, the Star Wars show. Mm. And I was like, we fight to see the sunset that we may not live to see. Mm. And I mentioned that before. It could either be a half um, half cup full or half cup empty kind of approach. But I kind of consider it of a positive. Like, especially in the social work field, like, I take that quote as we are planting seeds. And we're doing the work that we might not live to kind of see the benefits of. Mm. Or especially with our clients, like, we might not see the, um, the impacts until after the case is closed. Mm. But... Yeah, it kind of resonates like we're fighting for a fight that we may not see the benefits of. We may not see the sunset of our cases. We might not see the fruits of our labor until long mm -hmm. after. But I rest well knowing that we planted those seeds mm -hmm. and we are doing the fight to see the sunset. <laughs> and it might be after, it might be before, it might be during, but at least I know that like that's then, you know. Yeah, no, that's a great point too. Um, because sometimes, especially when you're in the moment and a case is super frustrating and you hit those challenges that where you can't do exactly what you want to do, um, it's remembering that. Mm -hmm. Like even the little things help. And it's funny you say that too, that was in my interview for this job, um, the supervisor asked me, are you a half full or half empty kind of person? Um, and of course, half full. Yeah, half full. <laughs> and I got the job, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely the winning answer. Absolutely. <laughs> you were talking about potentially not seeing um, what you do to the end, like t to its end goal um, with that Andrew quote. And I personally, I think that for your kinds of what you do for your jobs, I think you know your legacy will for sure live on with you know your entire entire child first program, because you know helping people never stops, it always goes on. So yeah, legacy will always continue. Yeah, right. absolutely. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, like and that 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 brings us joy to even like think that sometimes you know because like like Paige mentioned like you might be stuck in the moment, and sometimes like I wish every case every session that we had is the most perfect, most case like oh wow we left and we saw that and it's nice to know that especially towards the end and we do like exit interviews or exit assessments and they give us good scores and they they acknowledge like the work that we've done and they, they acknowledge the skills that we we help them achieve and it's, it's always great it's always great to know that like in the moment it might not seem like progress but progress is slow mm -hmm. and especially with therapy <laughs> like yes. I said we do therapy and mental health like it's slow. It's a slow journey, but it's as if you're consistent, you see the progress. Exactly, and it, we I do reiterate to the caregivers: this is behavioral therapy, and that takes some time, right? Mm -hmm. We're not just gonna wake up one day and, for example, like the ten pounds we want to lose will be off. Same thing. Um, so we reiterate too, especially with the population we're working with, consistency for children is so important. Um, it also keeps us um, accountable as yeah, well. Absolutely. Like we have to be consistent as well, um, and know that our work is not gonna happen overnight. And I tell that to my clients too. Like if I could wave a magic wand, I wish I could, but I can't. So mm. even just this hour to, with together with your child is enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love that like, she always <laughs> mentions like fitness stuff in regards to treatment, <laughs> and then I come out of nowhere and I'm like. Therapy is kind of like dog training. Right. <laughs> like, like, and it's kind of like dog training in regards to like, you know, like the dog trainer might come for an hour. But it's yeah. your job. It's the parent's responsibility. It's the child's responsibility. Well, most of the parents, right? Yeah. But it's the parent's responsibility to keep up with the techniques and the skills that, that we, we train them to do. That we train them to kind of keep them, keep those boundaries strong. We, we yeah. train them to keep the consistency going because if they stop, we don't want them to come to us and say, hey, look, it's not working. Mm when we leave a lot of homework. Mm. Therapy is homework. Therapy is not that one session. 
it's the you have to take the the skills and all the interventions to heart long after the session yeah. after the session that's where the work starts right exactly and a, another good word for like training too is like modeling yeah like modeling. we're always trying to model um, and I think that's a uh, strength of our team too we just we work so well with the children and even just doing that like the way we talk to them the way mm. how we talk to them it's um it's modeling for yeah, these characters. Role modeling for the caregivers. Yeah. Um, but always reminding them too that they're the expert on their child, yeah. right? Validation for caregivers, um, which is for anyone, right? You're. It's really a challenge to go into therapy in general. It takes a lot of courage, mm. so we do like to address that as well. Um, and we also, for caregivers that is necessary, we encourage them to seek their own therapy as well. Um, because we know that if a parent's okay, the child will be okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And those are some of the barriers, the external mm -hmm. and internal barriers that uh, may prevent the clinical work from happening. Right. Either if it's bill insecurity, food insecurity, um, and half the time is mental health is the biggest role, right? Like. We're going to address the child's behavior, and the biggest barrier to addressing child's behavior is the parent's mental health mm -hmm. and the lack of their addressing of mental health. And right. yeah, I think it's very important. And sometimes it's the biggest barrier of all, not necessarily <laughs> the parent, it's more so the parent's um, baggage that they have, you know? They, yeah. they have a lot of stuff going on and fighting generational curses, as you may, exactly. you know? So. Right, right. 